Hello, this is Nicholas Barron, and today I'm going to be presenting on a balanced delta robot for precise aerial manipulation, implementation, testing, and lessons for future designs. I'm going to begin with a brief introduction, followed by a description of the balanced delta robot architecture. I'm then going to talk about the manipulated design, the experimental setup, and then finally results and discussion, followed by conclusions. Using unmanned aerial vehicles to perform aerial manipulation tasks is an area that has grown in popularity in recent years as this allows for manipulation of objects in remote and hard to access environments. However, a significant limitation with this approach is that robotic arms are usually heavy and produce great dynamic effects onto the base to which they are attached, which can destabilize the drone itself. A solution to this is to statically balance the manipulator such that the position of its center of mass is constant, thus reducing the shaking forces transmitted to the base. The majority of the works on this make theoretical contributions in terms of the derivation of balancing conditions for various parallel mechanisms and the methods of designing such mechanisms. However, the number of mechanisms that have been physically implemented is limited, especially when it comes to balanced spatial manipulators. In this paper, the design and construction of a large statically balanced three degree of freedom delta robot is presented and flight tested. The manipulator uses a delta type parallel robot architecture to control the position of the end effector. The end effect has three degrees of freedom, translations along the X, Y, and Z axes. A system of countermasses and the pantograph linkage are used to statically balance the system. The masses are positioned such that the position of the center of mass of the system is constant for any trajectory of the end effector, such that the total linear momentum of the system is zero. The countermass attached to the pantograph not only balances the mass of the proximal and distal links of its corresponding limb, but also the mass of the end effector and parts of the masses of the distal links of the remaining limbs. The set of conditions that must be balanced, must be met for a balanced system, are then obtained by collecting the coefficients of the joint velocities and equating them to zero. The balancing conditions that are necessary to statically balance the mechanism are given on the screen right now. For the simpler arms, the countermass was attached directly to the other side of the motor such that it balanced the majority of their connected proximal and distal links. This countermass was connected at an offset angle to prevent the occurrence of self collisions with the motor housing and the frame connecting the manipulator to the drone. For the pantograph arm, the countermass was instead attached to a separate aluminium profile offset from the proximal link using four smaller carbon fiber rods. A mass positioning system was developed to allow for easy and accurate adjustment of the position of the countermasses along their respective links. The countermasses were formed using stacks of stainless steel sheets bolted together, which could be removed or replaced to achieve any desired mass. These were then attached to a sliding mount on the countermass arm, of which the position could then be adjusted using a lead screw running along the length of the countermass arm through the mount. The balancing performance of the manipulator was assessed by measuring the shaking forces imparted onto the base for a range of motions of the end effector. These results are compared with that of an unbalanced version of the manipulator for which the countermasses are removed. In both cases, the manipulator was attached to a static frame formed of aluminium profiles via an ATI gamma uh, force torque sensor. The forces imparted onto the base were then measured for five different trajectories of the end effector, two circular trajectories in the X, Y, and X, Z plane, and three linear trajectories along the X, Y, and Z axes. The five trajectories were carried out at three different speeds. The manipulator was then tested following the same circular trajectories, but this time on board a hovering aerial vehicle. Motion tracking cameras were used to obtain traje uh, trajectory tracking errors for the body of the drone and for the end effector of the manipulator. The manipulator was moved in a 10 centimeter radius circle for 10 cycles at 0.5 meters per second. The trajectory was repeated in the XZ and XY planes with and without the counterweights. From the results of the static testing, we see a reduction in shaking forces for all trajectories for the balanced manipulator in comparison with the unbalanced manipulator. Across the three speeds evaluated, there was observed on average an increase in, an, in experienced forces with an increase in the end effect speed. But interestingly, that this did not increase equally across all axes. For example, FZ in the line Z axis showed a significant increase with speed, whereas the other axes FX and FY only had a minor increase. Overall, the static testing results demonstrate that at higher speeds, when more extreme forces are imparted on the mount, the implementation of a balancing system provides more consequential gains. On average, the balancing system is successful at reducing the experienced forces across all axes at all tested speeds. For the onboard testing, the positional error of the aerial vehicle and the manipulator at end effector were measured and are shown for the tested trajectories. Marginal improvements in the range of trajectory tracking errors can be seen in some axes. However, this could also be attributed to random variation in performance within the margin of error. 
As the intention when designing the manipulator was to showcase the benefits of balancing, the system was made as large as possible to maximize perturbations. However, the system is also heavy and the vehicle has a low thrust to weight ratio when in flight. The additional mass of the counterweights impacts this further. This reduces the ability of the system to counteract perturbations and may outweigh the benefits of balancing. The trade-off between the reduction in shaking forces and additional mass is certainly an important consideration. In order to make a balanced delta manipulator viable for practical implementation on an aerial vehicle, a number of design changes would be required. For example, the steel masses used for the counterweights could be replaced with functional components, such as batteries, to run auxiliary systems, thus eliminating the increase in takeoff mass. This work presents the design of a force balanced delta manipulator for aerial manipulation. The architecture of the delta robot is described along with the design and construction of a physical implementation highlighting the unique structure and adjustable countermass positioning system. Static testing of the de developed manipulator demonstrates a significant reduction of the imparted forces onto the robot mounts. Onboard testing on an aerial vehicle, however, does not show a significant improvement, at least in terms of overall flight accuracy. Future designs incorporating the changes discussed could facilitate higher precision and effective stabilization without requiring additional control considerations for the vehicle. Thank you very much for listening.